Champions League. Um, I haven't watched Champions League in a while because Arsenal's not in it now. Yeah, but uh, I thought they were a good team. Hey, but let's go lap. Banter. Let's go lap. Banter. 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 Oh gosh! Apart from the football, it's just an awesome city, ne? It's just a fly city, yeah. Yeah, I love it. And what? what what's love it. What? Podcast and chill. Matt G, the Ghost Lady, and Len Moleko. Welcome to it, ladies and gentlemen. I got a special guest. Uh, not only is this guy one of my funniest uh, comedians, um, no, one of my favorite. Ne? I don't know, it's your show, man. <laughs> Own the show. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite comedians. Yeah. But you're an all round good guy, man. And Jesus. Um, I remember. That's so intense, man. Dude, I remember in, um, I was in high school, the show comes on, um, Pio Manati, PMS, and he actually invited me to one of the recordings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a long time. I was also, how old was I then? I was 19 then. But do you know how legendary that is now? Because that show was legendary in itself. Yeah. And yeah. I got to witness the magic. Yeah. You know how I, uh, what happened was, we were trying to write this, I was, I was trying to write this sketch called the kitty show rock uh, the kitty show showbiz kids or something kitty show rock oh shitty call kitty show rock star uh sh- kids or whatever. yeah yeah so the whole idea was like all these kitty show stars yeah doing oh. crazy things oh okay so then it was the sabc show and then etv people we couldn't clear the sabc people to do the sketches yeah and then also it was crazy. We we're gonna get we were gonna get them doing wild things, like <laughs> going to strip clubs. And, and so what I thought it, I thought this was sketch was gonna be fire. And then what I started, what I wanted to do, what I did was I I think you were the first person I reached out to. Yeah. And then when I reached out to, I said, "Yo, we're trying to do this." And you're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, let's do it, let's do it." <laughs> and then I think I reached out to Salamina, Salamina. and that's a, a bunch of us. And so, and. At some point, contractually, we couldn't access their ETV, and then you got it was problematic uh, in the thing. But oh, I think yeah, everyone was cool, yeah. And then you, we just kept in touch, yeah, yeah. And then one day, you're like, Yo, let's go. And I was like, Yeah, man, pull in, whatever, it doesn't matter. Fucking hell, it man. was cool. That's yeah. the first time I met you, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. We, were Ladies shooting, and we were shooting in Park Town, man, yeah. And I stayed in Park Town, yeah. So I yeah. remember that. I remember walking you to like, I was like, Yo, you're gonna be cool. <laughs> You're walking on your own. <laughs> I, I, this is literally 2002, 2000, 2003. Yeah. And I remember it. Like I'll it never yesterday. forget that day, man. Anyway, Lisa Kona, <laughs> thank you so much for coming through, Thanks man. Thanks for having me, man. I know, I know time is a very special thing. Um, so I appreciate you taking time. I lie a me. lot about time and I say, yo, I'm busy. Most of the time I ain't busy. I just don't want to do things. No, but you value time, though. Yeah, for myself, yeah. When when did you realize time is a commodity? Um I think I realized at a very young age. I think like just the idea of waking up and going to work bummed me out like as an idea. So I just w- always wanted to have my own time. And I got the idea of time from a friend of mine who just kept on saying, "Do you really just want to wake up every day and give all your time to the boss?" And I thought about that. And I've never worked. I only worked one job. I used to work at a, as a petrol attendant. <laughs> and I was 16 for about a year and a bit. Wow. And then I stopped. And then ever since then, I just never, I've never like checked in. I've never had a job since then. So I've always, I understood the idea of, t- I don't know if I value time. I don't know what that means. But I do know that I like to have my own time. Like I take like, Four times out of seven, four times out of seven days of the week, if I can, I'll sleep during the day. Is it? Yeah. The whole day? Nah, I sleep. So I'll wake up like maybe nine sometimes. Yes, yes, nine, yes. And then I would, uh, I would uh, just do my shit, you know. What and shit is like, that? Yeah, like how does whatever. your day look? How does your day look, bro? Yeah, it would, it would be, it would depend on what I have to do. And then I'll probably, sometimes I have lunchtime gigs. Sometimes I just do whatever I need to do. That day. And yeah. And then sometimes what I'll do is that like around 3 or 3.30, between 3 and 4, I'll take a nap 
two hour nap mm. and then wake up at six and I'm fresh again. Yeah. It's like a re kick. Yeah. And then maybe then I'll do a gig or go hang out. But if I don't do that, my day kind of, I'll be asleep by 10 and, you know. Did that start when you're a petrol attendant? Because maybe you're working night shift. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. It's just a thing I decided on. When I was a petrol attendant, I was in high school. So I'd go after school. Yeah, but I'm sure you looked like an adult at that time. No, nah, bro. I was a kid. I I was literally a child. I was uh, uh I was 16 so I would I would leave school and then I'd go uh like do my homework stuff and then like I would say from around 5 to about 8:30. So the what I did was like in between shifts. So the people work every day and there's people who come in. Mm -hmm. So in between shifts there's a lot of guys who have to leave early, who have kids. There's guys who are rocking up late, taxis are late, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. And I was the guy who worked in between those shifts. And, the, and that was between five and eight every day. And then w they, they were like, oh, this kid works, you know. Mm. And then they would get me over the weekend. So on Friday, Saturday, and um, uh, some Sundays I would work, like, all the time. So I'd work every day. Shit, dog. Yeah, yeah. I'd work every day, but then, I, w I mean, because I would... I, the money wasn't, I wasn't doing it for the money. I was doing it because the thing is across the street from my house. Um, like, so if they need me, they just call. Yo, someone didn't show up. Can you come? Then I'll come if I'm not there. Oh, not there. It wasn't okay. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they started making me a bit more permanent, like school holidays. I work every day. And then sometimes I'd be like, yo, man. I so you never had aspirations to be a manager? <laughs> Nothing nah, like man, that. I didn't think, I mean, as soon as I had the opportunity to quit that job, I quit the, I didn't even quit the job. I got fired because, because I was a temp, if something went wrong, the guys who were permanently working there would like blame it on me uh, because, yeah. you know, it wasn't like a, so if it would be, so if it was someone who broke something, they would be like, he broke it because yeah. they can't really fire me. Mm. I'm not fully employed. Yeah. Do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Freelancing. Yeah, yeah. So it was like. But if they said the person who did it did it, they would get fired, and that's a that's a bigger stake. So and have you ever been to that garage since? Yeah, I mean, my mom lives in that neighborhood, so I still go there. I mean, yeah. none of the people who, who were there when I was there yeah. are there now, I think. I don't even know why I'm doing this interview, because you're wearing the worst shirt in the world, man. That shirt is horrible. The wow. team is horrible. Shirt is horrible. Why is the team horrible? Arsenal? Are you even going to ask me that? Arsenal! I asked you that. You asked me questions. I answered them. I said, why is a team horrible? But for the first time, I can relate to Arsenal because I'm a Man U supporter. And now yeah. I'm going through what you guys no, have no, been no. going through for 20 you years. You haven't answered my question. Why is Arsenal a bad team? Because you guys don't win shit. We won the FA Cup in 2017. Come on, FA Cup. Who cares about the FA Cup? Why? <laughs> okay. That's the that's a weird argument. It's like you win the cup, who cares about that cup? We were in a European final last year. Last year? Yeah, we played Chelsea in the Europa Did Cup. Did you win it? No, we lost in the final. Because you shit. Okay, there's two ways to approach football <laughs> conversations. Yeah. It's through banter yeah. or we're gonna talk facts. So the way you approach it is total banter. We and I can accept banter. Yeah. Right? Which Mixed with a bit of facts. There are no <laughs> facts. You can't, a team that plays, that, a team that got a uh, European uh, uh, semi final uh, the year before, won the FA Cup the year before, was in the final uh, this year, it's not a shit team. That's not an indicator of a shit team. It's just that there's, no, it's true. There's What's a, a shit team then? I mean, I didn't bring up shit teams. you the person who brought up a shit team. I'm telling you that it's not a shit team. It's a narrative. A lot of people can't articulate why Arsenal is a bad team. They just know it's a bad team, but it's not a bad team. A team that played Champions League for 20 years, it's not a bad team. A team that has won the FA Cup more than any other team, it's not a bad team. A team who's won a, a Premier League in the last 15 years, three times, it's not a bad team. There are teams who never won the Premier League. The teams... So you, you, you're looking at, the, it's, it's the way you kind of look at the thing. Mm. So it's, it's, it's bizarre to me. And also Arsenal TV doesn't help because the rants and the, 
in articulation of what's going on yeah. is bad. It feeds but it's to not the narrative. A bad, it's, mm. not a, it's not a bad team. It's just like... Shit, you're right, bro. It's not a... I don't understand. So some, so I think like us, us, Arsenal TV is bad for the branding of Arsenal. Yeah. Because it's like it's complaining and moaning. Like I can tell you that it's one of the most successful teams in, in England. Mm. It's 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 got more titles than Manchester City. Yeah, it does. Which is fact. Which is fact. It's got it's won the Premier League more recently than Liverpool. Liverpool hasn't won the Premier League in, in like years. In thirty years or some shit. Yeah, you're right, actually. But no one says Liverpool's a shitty team. They won the Champions League last. So you know what I'm saying? You weigh it out and you go, okay, which is the more important? Whatever the case is. You know, I have I have this argument with Len all the time, because I believe football explains life. Do you think football explains? Fuck life? yeah. Yeah, ne. I use all, a lot of my metaphors from football. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I like I just go, it's yeah. I I always go, oh yeah, that's that's what happens. I'll give you an example with why. I think there's so much... Sports are in general. In general, eh? Yeah. But if you're a football guy, then that's where you go for your... It's the craziest thing. Like, you know, when I meet successful people like yourself... Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, they always, like, have the same trait. They're always all humble. Like... I'm not humble, though. I don't think humble is a valuable trait. You could be a murderer and be humble. You could be a serial killer and be humble. You could murder, like, 40 babies... And then I'll be like, yo, man, how many babies did you, did you murder this week? And you'll be like, yeah, I don't talk about that. you are like, oh, he's so humble. He doesn't want to. It's who cares, man? Like, I don't think being humble is a valuable trait to me. I think it's not something that I care about. If you think I'm humble, that's fine. But it's not something that I'm thriving towards. But you're not arrogant either. It doesn't matter. Like, it, it, that's what I'm saying. Arrogance doesn't mean you're a bad person either. Right? Do you understand, like, I would go as far as to say Nelson Mandela was arrogant. A person to think that they can fight a whole state, that's arrogance. You need mm. a, a great deal of arrogance to go, I can fight apartheid or, like, uh, uh, you know, I mean, he didn't do it alone. I'm saying just to, to have the idea in your mind. M- m- most leaders are like that, to, yeah, to think so that that's I can control. Arrogant, but it's not yeah. necessarily a bad trait, so mm-hmm. there's a connotation. Because, they, because generally people are trying to thwart us and be like, yo, don't think outside of this thing. So arrogance and humble, there's a great value placed in, nah, man, it's just, I don't value those things too much. I don't care about them. Like if you're arrogant, it doesn't mean you're shitty at what you do. It doesn't mean you're a bad person if you're arrogant. It just means you're arrogant. Are you still a vegan? Yeah, I've been vegan for three years. Shit, dog, that's dope, bro. Is it dope? Yeah, man. <laughs> that's fucking dope, man. <laughs> I, I just can't understand it, man. Like, I, don't, I think it's too hard, man. I love my meat, you know? That's okay. Yeah. But isn't it weird how, as black people, we're not taught about food, like, growing up? We don't understand the concept of food. I think no one's really taught about the concept. I think people just kind of develop into... Listen, man, a lot of people kind of, like, grow up a certain way, and then they become those people, and they die those people. But that's a very sad way of living life. I think life changes all the time. Even if you're a doctor and you were a doctor in the 70s and you're 30 years old and you're 60 now or whatever the, whatever the time frame is, you got to change your, the way you approach things because medicine changes. People uh, change. People change. The st- uh, medical procedures change. So you can't be stuck. You can't be stuck on old ways. So you, uh, you have to be constantly improving yourself, changing yourself, and, like, evolving yourself. Why did you want to be a vegan? I used to be a vegan when I was a teenager. At the petrol station? Yeah, I was a vegan then. Uh, I just stopped because I wasn't buying my own food, so it was very hard to, like, really get the food I really needed and wanted. And I was playing sports, so I I would, you know, I needed to, like... So I was just eating potatoes and bread, and so it wasn't good. Yeah, yeah. So I was advised that I should eat a wide range of vegetables or eat meat. So the best option. Then I just continued. But then I was like, oh shit, I used to do this. So thing. nothing happened in your life that made you want to be vegan. You just decided from a I used to do, when I was 16, I was vegan. When I, from the age of 16 and 17, I was vegan. So, But I'm saying, what made you want to be a vegan? This, I mean, also, it's, listen, the, the, the industrialization of animals is crazy. Like, 
you know, to the idea of animals being sold in this bulky way and um, and just being squashed up and slaughtered and and that's their whole existence doesn't sit well with me. Mm. And then what do you do at like family functions? You don't eat the meat. No, I don't eat the meat. No. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I saw, it's yeah. I, I don't know if it's crazy, but you know. <laughs> so you don't even like I Khalil in Nama at at all. Nah, I'm actually um, repelled by it a little bit, but I don't eat it at all. No, I don't think about so it. So, so tell me, what would you have for breakfast then? I would have like uh, avocado on toast. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's all you need to eat. Really, you don't have to eat like a shitload. No. And then for lunch, jam and toast. Oh, uh, fuck off. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure it out. I mean, I haven't really thought what I'm going to have for lunch, but I'll fi- I'll go home. I'll okay, what did you have for lunch yesterday? Um, I also eat like once, twice. I eat like once a day, so what did I have yesterday? You I kidding? Know. Once a day, bro? Yeah, I eat like wha- like most of the time once a day. Wow. So I eat like I didn't, I, I had coffee today and, this, and just like a banana, but then I'll eat something else like, I'll eat like at five or something. And then I'll eat like a big meal and then I'll be cool. What's a big um, meal for you? T- so I'll have like, um, I'll, uh, today I've got like this mushroom stew that I'm going to make with this grain from South America called millet. So I'm going to cook the grain. The grain takes a little long to cook because it's like, then I cook it and then, yeah, millet, tons of protein in that. Then I tomatoes, mushrooms. It's like a little st- stewy coconut oil yeah i mean coconut milk boom that's gonna take me about 40 minutes no 30 minutes to cook yeah uh and then i'll eat it and then i'll be cool i'll be cool till the next day wow I'll get a five. but i mean you don't have to eat all the time i think like what happened is what we were taught like all the things that we do are not things that we really so as human beings in the last 300 years we have developed a system called capitalism that makes us consume things all the time but we we're not we're supposed to sleep during the day that's what humans did all their lives we slept during the day wake up do stuff sleep wake up you know that's how we're supposed to live so there's like a certain way that your body's structured to live so in the last 300 years we've kind of disrupted that so i'm trying to like go back to that as possible so our forefathers didn't eat three times a day most people in the world ate like once a day and so even when they ate meat, they ate it like once a week. It wasn't every day. You know, the, the cattle would be, they would eat it like, but they would also eat it like, there was no way to keep refrigerate the meat. So it, they'd catch it, slaughter it, and then, you know what I mean? It wasn't, so the way we live now, it's quite weird, because they have to stock the meat, they have to pump some other stuff in the meat so that it stays fresh. Then and then and then and then we like catching cancers of in our forties and thirties and it's weird. But also humans weren't supposed to live up to their eight seventies. Serious? No man. Humans used to die in their forties and shit. So we've also <laughs> improved life it's a it's complicated. I mean I've read I've read up a lot on these things, but it, it's like humans never used thirty thirty six. Ah, you are out, brother. <laughs> So he's like 40, about four years 50. left. If you're living up to 50, you are balling. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And what was the cause of that? We just didn't have the technology to keep humans alive for long. It was just, that's the way. That's how. But that's funny because, I mean, if they were eating meat once a week, surely that prolongs their life, stuff like that. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And they lived, you know, they their life was not as stressful as us. I don't know, man. I mean, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of theories as to why things. But I think, like, the stresses of, Today are quite insane. Yeah. The stresses of capitalism. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? It's insane. The economy's rough. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the concept of money? Yeah, I mean, money is... Uh, yo, that's a very complicated question. The concept of money is complicated. I don't have a problem with money. I have, I have a problem with, like... 
like I was having an argument with my friend and I so he says to me so I say like billionaires are the problem so he's like if you say if this is I mean this is a clever person that I'm arguing he says are you telling me if I'm created a situation where I can sell something for one rand and then at the end of it all I can make a billion rand from selling this thing for a pound and I had to go yeah that's ethical and that makes sense but give me a situation where you can set up a situation or infrastructure that's going to make you a billion rand in 10 years or 15 years or 20 years you you need the capital to produce the billion right you need like a bill you need do you understand what i mean yeah. like you like for you to produce a billion of anything do you know how much cap- the capacity you need for that? And so that's the problem. It's, that's, it's seemingly an equal way to play. It's not. It's like if you statistically, if you form a rich family, you're highly likely to make it. So statistically, if you form a, if you form a um, poor family, you, it's hard. But I mean, in the same light, you could make a billion from playing soccer. You don't need much capital for that. Yeah, you need but... Talent. Yeah, but that's a different thing. That's not your agency. It's like you're playing football and, you know, you sure you make like 20 million pounds, but the organization around you is, you know. But do you value money, though? Yeah, I mean, I live in a capitalist society, so money is not, it's not my choice to value money. Yeah. I have to value money. Yeah. I mean, I grew up in this, so I have to, yeah. Are you one of those guys that, like, when you get a mil, you want 10 mil? When you get 10 mil, you want 100? No, I'm definitely not one of those people. I'm yeah. just, like, like I'm, I'm waiting for an amount of money where... <laughs> 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 There's an amount of money I have in my mind. Yeah? When I have that money, I'm only available on email. <laughs> <laughs> I thank goodness you haven't, don't have that money yet. <laughs> You can only get hold of me, but my phone will not exist yeah. anymore. I'll have a phone; it'll have the internet, but it won't ring. It will just be, it will just be, what do you want on email? Yeah, everyone has to write what they want what's, on email. What, what's that amount? I can't tell. I've ne- never told anyone that amount. But if, when I get it, it's gonna be nice. We'll know. You'll be like, yeah, okay, that guy's all available on email. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, are you an introvert, bro? I don't, no, not in, I don't think so. Mm. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think I'm, I'm getting a vibe friend. like you don't like people, man. You just like your own space. No, 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 no. I, I love. I like people. I interact. I'm very social. Cause you have to. Not by choice. Uh, I think that what's going on? The camera fine. <laughs> no, no, no. Continue. This one's recording. That one's still. St- oh, okay. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't think I'm an introvert, man. I think I'm like. No, 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 I don't know. I wouldn't say intro. I wouldn't say I'm introverted now. Would you rather go out to the club or to a comedy club or a movie or whatever, or just sit at home and, and read it a book? It all depends on my mood. Like sometimes I just go to the club on my own, and I always bump into people I know, especially if I go to like specific clubs, and I'll just hang out and I'll hang out with them. But I don't. It all depends on my mood, man. Sometimes I just want to sit at home and read. Sometimes I just want to have a have a. What you reading at the moment? I just finished a book called The, the Man Who Killed Apartheid about Dimitri Tafandas. Mm. So I'm trying to read, uh, there's this play that I'm, I'm trying to do this play. Fuck, I've never told anyone this. But I'm trying to do a play. Because mm. I used to act in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, let me just act a bit. Um, so I want to do that again. So I need to find this play called House of Truth. So mm. I've been looking for it. Hopefully I'll find it in the next couple of days. Because I just finished the uh, the Dimitris of Finders read, and then I'm gonna um, uh, I'm read the play and see if I want to do the play or readapt it or the, you know I I I, I like the I, yeah I, that so I want to I'm my next read is gonna be this play and I don't want to start something else and then like find the play yeah the, the, me reading the play is quite urgent yeah what's uh, the book sounds interesting man was it a good read. It's a fantastic read. It's about the guy who killed Fervut. Henrik Fervut. Yeah, killed Fervut in Parliament. Mm. The founder. So he, he just stabs him in Parliament. So they talk about his childhood where he grew up. And 
it's fun it's fascinating and how he you know plans or he, pl- he thinks of this idea and where he lives and how he, and he eventually dies in prison shit man isn't it crazy that those stories are not told like visually like i can't watch a movie like that you get what i'm saying yeah you can read a book though yeah, fuck it. I hate books, man. I hate don't reading. Don't ever say that, man. I hate reading, man. <laughs> don't say you know, that. You know, you know what? You know what I think would work for me, right? If you can try audiobooks, but don't hate reading. But I was saying, I was about to get to audiobooks. I don't like those as well. They sound too overproduced. Like you have to listen so attentively. I think I would appreciate, like, if you wrote a book. Yeah. But you read it out like this, like as a podcast. <laughs> 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 I would definitely listen to that. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know if that kind of vibe. Like, is like, like. Let's say, let's say you. You, you can get a summary of the thing. Like, let's. But say I mean, the thing about books as well is like. You can, um, you can, get, like it. It ex, like every time you read something, it expand like a little bit of your neuron. Uh, your neurons get expanded. Like a little bit of your life gets fulfilled. A little bit. Like you mm. could. I read about. This is how I. I think that you should approach reading. Read about the things you like, that you're interested in. Yeah. Don't read what, like, so don't read, like, so people go, oh, no, this author, you must. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Don't do that. Like, mm-hmm. read the things that you're interested about. So I'm interested in football, so I... Yeah, yeah, I, read, I love I, football. I've yeah. read Zlatan's one. Yeah, I've read that as well. Yeah, yeah, football I'll read all day, like... Yeah, Sir yeah, Alex so, read about, so read about the things that you yeah. care about. And then in the things that you care about, there are things, there are threads in there. That so you learn. Well, no, like, for instance, like, think about it this way, like, so you, so I will read a, if you read this Latin book, they'll talk about Maomo. Maomo, yeah, where, where he grew, grew up, up yeah. yeah. And then you, so you, you read about Maomo and you go, oh, Maomo is there. Then one day you read a book about Maomo. Mm. Then you, then it's like now you, you know, expanding your world about the things that you, you know what I mean? And then you're like, who's this guy that they, they mentioned here? Who's this guy? Who was the president at the time? Or whatever the case is. Because so I remember a, when I read Sir Alex's book, it taught me a lot about human nature. And yeah, you see what I mean? Yeah, and so and don't, I, like, now I hate reading. That's not cool. That's not some cool shit to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how is it, is it to get it on an American TV, man? Because you, you guys make it look so easy. No, America's just hard. Like, it's just a hard, tough place to be in. I'm trying to spend a lot of time there next year, but it's just a hard time, place to be. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just America. I don't know. I don't know how to. It's you have to hustle. You have yeah. to hustle and bustle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And 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 how different is it from 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 Job? America. Mm. Uh, a lot more guns. Yeah. America's a fuckload. Every motherfucker has a gun. They were like, yeah, <laughs> now, <laughs> yes. Under the table, I've got a gun. Shit. <laughs> now, now dessert doesn't taste the same. You know, you're like, shit, okay. Well, you have some dessert, sir. Nah, nigga, this nigga got a gun. Shit. You know, I've never seen a gun in my life. I've seen it a couple of times. In America. Some... <laughs> no, no, I've never seen a gun in America except police, but I know that people have guns. <laughs> they never really, like, bring them out in front of everyone, but you know that the guns, people, the guys have told you, I've got a gun. Don't know. My daughter has a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, wh- why do you think as South Africans we're so fascinated about America, man? Everyone, I mean, America is a dominant culture in, just in terms of how they, um, uh, how do they, how do their, their media, like through, it's through media. So everyone is. Like if you go to um, Copenhagen, people are like, they know who Drake is. Mm. They know all these American icons. But it's all media. I don't think it's like an obsession per se. I think it's just we. One of their biggest exports is media, and they tell their stories to other people all the time, and they fight for that. So that's why they dominate popular culture, and that's why it seems like we're obsessed with them. But we're not really. Yeah, because I was watching an interview. I don't know. Do you know Charlemagne the God? I know Charlemagne. The yeah. God. So he was interviewing Bonang on on the Breakfast Club. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. What did you think of that interview? I, I watched snippets of it. I didn't watch the whole thing. It was yeah. cool. It's an interview. Yeah, so so he was like uh, in awe of Banang. Meanwhile, here, yeah, we in awe of Charlemagne. It, it was so weird because he was like, yo, dude. Yeah, but it's also interviewing style. Like, he, 
when people are on your show, like the same way you um complimenting me and kind of like in awe, you talk to the people that you're interested in. Yeah. No, I have to say that. I, I can't say yeah, he's one of I'm my saying. worst. Yeah, but that's <laughs> that's I could say the same. That's what Charlemagne feels. Oh. It's like, oh, if I have the person, I gotta make them feel. That's an interviewing style thing. No, I watched but that I, interview. He was be. really personal. He really meant everything you were saying. Yeah, yeah. Like he I wants mean, to I, move down to Cape Town and all that stuff. Yeah, like that makes all the sense in the world. Cape Town is fly. It's it's dope. It's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I can't speak on his behalf, but I think it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So you never got a culture shock when you went to America. I, I'm not in America. I'm in the. I'm in London. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'm in London, mostly. I go to America maybe for a month or two. Or two. And how's London different from? Joburg, America. It's, it's just the flyer city in the world for me. It's yeah. dope. Everything you want is there. You're kidding. And then there's football. Oh, yeah. Five, five football teams. You've been to Old Trafford? I went to Old Trafford in 2017, I think. It was it 2017? Yeah. I went to Old Trafford the last game of the season. I think they were playing Arsenal. I think it was 2016 or 2017. I don't remember. I think if I go to Old Trafford, I'd cry, bro. That's like my ultimate dream. The atmosphere is great in Old Trafford. Nah. Uh, not the best... The craziest, the best atmosphere I've ever experienced was a Champions League night at PSG. Holland. No, man. French. I mean, Paris. Uh, Paris, Paris. Paris Saint-Germain. I thought you said PSV. <laughs> yeah. No, PSG, yeah. Yeah, yeah. PSG, that PSG. was a bit, yeah, that was a... Uh, I've been to a Holland game. I've been to a Europa League game. You do Champions League nights as well? Hey, bro, what's the, why, what's the point of being in Europe if you're not <sighs> watching Champions League wow, as a football neighbor. fan? Shh. You're wasting everybody's time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, foot, Champions League. Um, I haven't watched Champions League in a while because Arsenal's not in it now. Yeah, but uh, I thought they were a good team. Hey. But that's called Lap. Banter. That's <laughs> called Lap. <laughs> banter. 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 Oh, gosh. Apart from the football, it's just an awesome city, ne? It's just a fly city, yeah. Yeah. I love it. And what, what, what's, it. what's buzzing there at the moment? Is it like podcasts, uh, comedy? I don't know. But you left everything. There. Everything is happening in London, man. Yeah. Yeah, everything's happening. Where do you like going in London? What? Where do you like going when you're in London? Um. Shit, man, I go. Yo, bro, you are, I don't know. Like, I just go anywhere. I just go everywhere and anywhere. There's not like one specific place. It's like if you're in the right neighborhood, then, you know, Everything is happening. Is it true? Because, like, you know, when they talk about transfers and stuff, they're like, foreign players usually like to go live in London. So play, like, where that Arsenal, Chelsea, yeah. as opposed to Man City, is that, or Man United That's or Manchester? That's true. Is it, is because it? the city is dope. Yeah. So if you married, like, your wife doesn't want to live in Liverpool. <laughs> as a city, though, like, she's like, what? No ways. So a lot of guys are always trying to move to London. That's why it's, if you look at player movements, like they'll try to get a London team first. No players trying to move from London and go live in fucking Cardiff mm. or like live in Birmingham or live in fucking, I don't know, I don't know, those weird places. Yeah, which a lot of people just want to live in London. What do you think about VAR, man? Yeah, I think anything at its beginning is going to have problems. I think VAR is, the intention is good, but like some, t it's tricky, man. It's tricky. It's really tricky to, because when was, when was it, was it Liverpool United where um, Smalling scored, but they had fouled, um, there was a foul on the other side on what's this dude's name? Um, Van Dijk. No, 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 not Van Dijk. He's a forward. He's a he's a Liverpool forward. Mo Salah, Sane. No, the Firmino. other one. No, the other one. He's a forward. Uh, Ings. No, not. Fuck, man. What's this? Lallana. Dude's name? No, not Lallana, man. He's he's on the bench all the time. He'll come. He'll come on occasion. What's oh, the with the dreads. You with the Origi. Origi. Yeah. They fouled Origi on the other side of the bench of the field. They took the ball. That was a clear foul. And then they scored clear handball score. So I uh, you know, like can you you know, can you stop the game post goal? And it's it's very hard to implement. The idea is good, but the implementation of it is still dicey. Like, yo, do we stop the game here? Do we do we do sometimes the linesman can 
lift his flag, you score the player stop, you score a goal. Retrospectively, they go, oh no no no, that was on actually. The linesman made a mistake. I think it's trash, man. They're trying to make make soccer perfect, and you can't. Soccer can't be perfect. It's just like that's what I'm saying. Football explains life. It's just like people. People can't be perfect. You know, you need referees to make mistakes so that... Yeah, we're s that's what we're saying. We're saying we're helping the referee to make as little mistakes as possible. But then that's killing out... It's killing out the soul of football. Uh, mistakes don't necessarily indicate soul, man. No, I'm saying... We're like trying to get the fairest result possible. We're trying to get... It's the same as the at law. At what expense? It's the same as the law, right? We're going, okay... Uh, bring evidence. We don't go, yo, this person is did this, and we we don't go, we don't go. This person was killed by Mac, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Anybody who kills anybody gets whatever sentence we decide on, right? Yeah. We go, okay, let's hear the story. Why? What happened? Was it self-defense? Was it second degree? First degree? Was it, you know what I mean? What, what, was it an intentional? An inten what, 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 what are the circumstances? And I think it's the same. We're trying to fix, we're trying to help the, the judiciary or the system or the, the thing that makes a decision make a better decision. Right. Give, we, we're trying to collect information. That's all it is. Have you met uh, any famous soccer players that side when you, when you, not really. Only used to, I met like a bunch of, uh, Crystal Palace guys, a couple when Dikhasha was there. When oh, Dikhasha Dikhasha was yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who did you meet from Crystal Palace? Zaha? No, I don't think. Was Zaha there? No, I don't think Zaha. Was Zaha there? I don't think Zaha was there. I uh, met D uh, Delaney um, and uh, Gabzi. What's his, his name? Was, we, call, we just call him Ga uh, Gabzi. Delaney, Gabzi. Fuck, who is it? Yeah, just a bunch of. I don't remember the other dude. I got a, fi a photo of it. You could put it on the podcast. Just yeah. so people have. A, I have a photo of the day when I met him. Yeah. But who do you think, if you would meet, you'd have like a groupy moment? I I met Henri in in. Um, Henri Thierry. Yeah, in Austin Shit. at the All Star at the NBA All Star game. That was like okay, cool. This is the Arsenal God. Whatever, peace out. Yeah. That was it. So no one else can top that. I don't care, man. I don't really care. I don't like bothering people with much. Mm. Like, you'll see someone be like, I'll oh, leave that guy alone. Let that guy be. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, like most of the time, people don't want to be bothered. Wait, what do you think about social media? Because there's a lot of people bother other people on social I don't, media. Like, right now on social media, I don't get involved in anything. I just talk about my stuff. And I don't, for the last three years, I haven't really bothered anyone on Why? social media. Because it, it doesn't solve anything. It doesn't. It's 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 uh, not everything you say needs to be heard. Not everything you're thinking needs to be heard. Yeah. Not everything we don't like. Most of the time, I'm like, yeah, we didn't need to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So there's so I think like a lot of people are relying on social media for basic things. Like, if you have a problem with your boss, bro, go to your boss, bro. Like, but it's all about instant gratification. Yeah, that doesn't help you. Like, if you're beefing with your company, coming on social media, how does that help you? I don't understand. Maybe uh, your next employer might be on social media and might watch it. You yeah. might see your, your, your tweet. Yeah, and be like, this is a horrible employee to have. Mm, no, maybe they can look at your buyer and say, oh, I'd like to employ them. No, <laughs> no, I don't think that's. I think the dude is gonna be like, if, if I'm I, if I'm ranting about my boss, right? Yes, I'm like, if the, I work. if the guy is a boss, right? He gets into disputes with employees. He's like, if I ever get a dispute with this employee, he's gonna out me on Twitter instead of trying to resolve this thing. No, but I'm else. saying, I'm saying, like, if I tweet, I'm ranting about my boss. Yeah, I'm like, I'm working x amount of hours. I do overtime, still not being appreciated. I'm so sick and tired of my job. I wish I could find a better job. And then someone sees that. Who's in my next, who could be my next employer? Yeah, you could. Listen, man. I'm, listen, on my end, the way I see it, I wouldn't see it that way. 
I would see it, I would just view someone who is unable to sort out issues. Yeah. Right? You, you haven't sorted out the issue by going on social media. But you can't dismiss the good social media does. You can't dismiss the good of knives. They cut <laughs> bread. But niggas get stabbed with knives as well. Yeah. Like, and social media can't stab yeah, you. it's the same. So you, mm, are, it's the same. everything is the same. It's like everything's got the... But you don't give a fuck about it, man. I don't and bother any anyone or anything on social media. I just keep to my... I just do... So how I do you handle your, your, your trolls then? Or haters? The thing about trolls is that the more you are not... Like, it's an energy thing. So if the minute you change your energy on social media, then you get less trolls. The last two years, I've gotten less, gotten less trolls because my energy is not troll. So people think because the, it's a trolling space, you need a troll. I would go, nah, I don't have to troll. Just speak your mind. How do you like change I don't your troll energy? People. I just don't, if there's something crazy going on, I watch it, but I'm not going to comment on it. Mm. I'm not going to go, mang, 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 mang. I don't do that anymore. I used to do that, and then it, it just kind of used to backfire because people just never, you don't have the space to articulate yourself. Yeah, you got 140 And, and you don't have to say, you don't have to be heard on everything. Mm. You don't have to be heard. Not every thought that you're saying is, is worth hearing. Yeah. That's what, even if you're writing a book, there's an editor or someone will go, ah, that's not necessary. That doesn't, so, you know, the minute you learn that, it's the world is your oyster. Because now I can channel my energy on that platform easily. Do, do you think it's got a part to play in anxiety? People's anxiety? No. Capitalism is giving you anxiety. For real? Of course. Bills, status in the world. Oh, I thought you said cannibalism. No, no. Oh. Capitalism. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. social media. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Social yeah. media is where you out the thing. and uh, Yeah, I, I don't think... Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Anxiety is anxiety. What do you, what do you I'm not, a, you know, I don't know. Because if you go on social media, there's a lot of people depressed, man. I don't think they're depressed because of social media. I think those people are dealing with other things. Yeah. I don't think if you took away social media, those people will be less depressed. I think that's... I don't know, man. It kind of reminds me like high school, you know? Um, we get people that post a picture just because they got five likes. Now they're in depressed mode. I didn't have social media in high school. Yeah, but in high school, there were all those cool kids who represent likes. And if they didn't like you, you'd be depressed because you're not cool. Yeah, that's fine. You don't ha It's fine. I don't understand why you... Who gives a shit? It's fine. That's <laughs> life. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. One, you could... You but try explaining that to a 16-year-old Loisa who works at the yeah. petrol station. I got that in the, when I was 16. I totally get it. I got it. I didn't... I so you're the fortunate ones. Yeah, but I mean, that's life. Life is not always going to be accommodating to you. It's going to be tough. And it's life is a constant struggle. And sometimes you have to be lucky that you have a struggle worth living for. Mm. I know it's a crazy thing to say, but life is, life is a struggle. You could, and it's got, you could have all the money in the world, but you'll struggle with something else. What's it's your just struggle? It's how life is. It's just life. What, what's your struggle? It's just, just a lot of things, man. It's just trying to figure out a lot of things about yourself. What do you want? Where do you want to live? You struggle with that. And it's like, oh, okay. Do I want to? So you're struggling about where you want to live? It's just one of the things. That's a nice just struggle. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of other things, you know, but it's not like, that's the, you, you thinking, you overthink, you, are you an, am I an overthinker, am I making enough money, am I doing this? It never ends, it's just, you, you have to find like a, so I can't like be, yo man, <laughs> uh, I can't be sympathetic to you because you're not a cool kid in high school, I don't care, you'll be fine, you know, I don't yeah. give a shit about that. yeah. yeah. Is that is is uh, this kind of thinking? Is that what you think um, plays a part in your success? Is that like a major tool of why you're successful? I don't know, man. I don't know. I just yo. <laughs> uh, no, I. I don't know. I haven't thought of that. Mm. I haven't thought. Do you think your success is based on I don't know your surroundings or just the universe aligning itself and aligning? 
towards your thoughts and stuff. Okay, tell me what you mean by success. Uh, so that I, I t maybe I'm mishearing your question. And so I don't seem like I'm a difficult customer. <laughs> difficult customer. <laughs> Uh, being able to do what you love and get paid a shitload of money for it. Yeah, I think like, because I've been doing stand-up since I was 17, so it's, it's, it's second nature to me, so I, I don't know. I, I, like, I don't, I don't, like, I don't have like traits of success. I don't know what that do means. You, do you believe in the whole, the universe, speak to the universe, put it out there? Definitely. Okay. I do that. I, I believe that 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But then don't you believe sometimes there's things that happen in our life that we can't control? There's nothing in your life you can't control. Can't you can contr control the decisions you make. Yeah, no, but I'm saying like there's... Uh, part of the life of it, part of life is not, is not knowing what's... You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. 100%. Yeah, so there's no control in that. So you can plan whatever you want, but you don't know what's happening tomorrow, the next day, the next week. Shit could go a specific way. You know, there could be a war, there could be a whole bunch of shit that could happen. Are you religious or spiritual? No, I'm, not, I'm not religious. Are you spiritual? I'm not spiritual. I'm just... Uh, don't tell I'm me you're an atheist. I don't give a fuck about any of that shit. Shit, you keep being Louisa. I don't care about. No, nah, I'm not religious at all. Yeah. I don't. So, what, d don't you believe there's a higher power? Uh, is there a higher power? I don't know, man. Like, there could be a higher power. So what? What you think we're just living? Are we? Are we not just living? There's got to be a purpose. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. I mean, that's fine. If no, I'm problem. trying to understand what you, your train of thought is. I don't, like, listen, I, I generally don't believe in any religion. I, fi I understand the value of religion. I just don't believe in any of it. I just live life, man, right? I just don't fucking be an asshole. That's what life, all these religions, they'll tell you. At the end of the day, if you sum up all religions, Chip, what are you trying to say? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think we spent three hours. All I was trying to say is, don't be an asshole. Oh, yeah, <laughs> fuck, I can do that. <laughs> I don't have to join most to do that, no? <laughs> like, yeah, just... So that's how it goes for me. I'm like, I don't need, like, a higher power to tell me that I'm... So what do you believe? Yeah. What about ancestors? Yeah, I mean, ancestors are a fucking strange thing. It's the same thing, man. I could believe in them because I am I grew up in that I'm live in that environment and that's how we roll. But even there I'm quite skeptical. What are you skeptical about? Listen, man, you get an uncle, he was an asshole, didn't give a shit, didn't you know what I mean? Now he's a fucking ancestor of high order. <laughs> <laughs> now we have to stop our fucking Saturdays. <laughs> For that asshole who did nothing. <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> yeah. But he's a boss on the <laughs> other side. <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. That doesn't even make sense to me. Yeah. No, dude, I, please make like, me think about it. For, think about it in my, I don't eat meat. Yes. If I die, people are going to slaughter. Mm. How does that, you know, how does that make sense? You know what I mean? <laughs> so it, it's, the thing is, whatever makes sense to you in your mind, do it. I'm not saying don't do it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand because yeah, yeah. for the life of me, I can't. It's fine. It's okay. Yeah, no, no I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know, I, but I'm really, I'm intrigued. Fair, that's cool. You know, I get that. So I don't know how, how so you just move, bro. I just move. You just move. That's crazy. Don't you feel like you need something to be back in you? I'll be fine. <laughs> uh, that's crazy, but I don't know how you do it, bro. I don't know how you do it. I'll be fine. That's crazy. When did you start realizing this? Being 15? Like 15. Yeah. 
Dude, your life, I think you you were born 15 and then your life started <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, 15, I just kind of, I was just like, woohoo. I was in another world. There's a, there's a lot of crazy shit that happened when you were 15, 16, 17, man. That I, I think, was a free spirit. Mm. <laughs> it was dope. It was really dope. I was a dope teenager. Shit, man. So, so when you travel like all over the world, with all these religions and what's happening, there's nothing that's maybe like got your attention and like, ah, oh, maybe I could do this. Nah. Dololo. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just, I'm just not a religious, but I also don't like having religious conversations because they never end. Mm. I'm just like, you know what? All right, cool. All shit. right, let's, <laughs> let's talk about aliens. You believe in aliens? Mm, shit, mm, no. Listen, there used to be, in the 90s, there used to be way more alien sp- spottings, it's cameras, and cameras were very hard. Every, not everyone had the camera. People were like, oh, I saw one, need a camera. We all have cameras now. We should be fucking seeing way more of those things. <laughs> so I'm like, eh. I've never understood the concept of aliens, man. It doesn't make There's sense. A, it's plausible. Mm. But it's I don't I need way more evidence. Yeah, you got two hundred million now from the lotto. What are no. you gonna do with it? From the, if I had two, if I had two hundred million, yeah, you won the lotto. Mm. Shit, that's crazy. That's a lot of money. I'd probably just send a whole. I'll send like. I'll probably send like a thousand kids to school. Mm. I'll probably the first thing I'll probably start an education fund or some shit. Just send kids to school and yeah. just like, or like try to create an industry of some sort, IT game, whatever the fuck it is, gaming like engineering. Like I'll figure out a way. Like yo, how do we str- how do, how do I throw this back into society and then it can somehow come back to me tenfold. Yeah, I I probably would just invest it in a bunch of people. Reason why I'm asking that because I want to find out what makes you take apart from comedy, you know? Because you don't like meat, you don't like yeah, religion. Like who the fuck gets meat to make them tick? Me? What kind of fuck it? Like so what? Yeah. Okay, I guess. Yeah, fucking love having meat, lamb chops, all that shit. It's delicious. But it's not about me. It's about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to find out how your mind works, man. It's intriguing. It's 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 crazy, man. My mind is not intrigued. Well, I guess if you say so, I guess. So what makes me tick? Yeah. Life, being alive makes me tick. Waking up every morning and be like, all right, cool, I got all my limbs. Mm. My brain works. My fingers work. My Dude, do you even get laid, works. bro? Huh? Do you even get laid? I've never seen you with like a chick or like that. Anything. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess, I don't know. Do I get laid? Probably. The <laughs> probabilities are there. Keep it in the realm of possibilities. <laughs> Where else did you get laid? That's such a teenage question. <laughs> like, no adult <laughs> should ever look at another adult. <laughs> like, when was the last time you got laid? That's fucking mad. <laughs> I don't think that's a, yeah. I'm a teenager at heart, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm just like, that's such a, a <laughs> bizarre question. <laughs> is there someone in your life, though? What does that mean? Like, are you dating someone? No, nah, nah, I'm not dating anyone at all. Is it? No. Mm-hmm. I have, uh, no, I have no, I have nobody that I call every day and tell them how my day went. Who do you call, though, every day? I don't call anyone any day, every yeah, day. Yeah. That's crazy. Who the hell are you calling every day? I just find the idea of calling someone every day crazy. Like your moms and stuff. Not I'm, literally. I don't like call every my mom day. every day. I probably call her like once a week or once every 10 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like every... What the fuck are you talking about every day? Like, I'm not like, literally, man. No, I'm saying like even if you're talking to someone, what the fuck are you guys talking about <laughs> every fucking day? Yeah, yeah. It's just like every day? yeah. That's when you hear all the bullshit questions. Um, like, you know, when someone's telling you about work, and you're like, okay, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about HR. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about Mandy. 
I give a fuck about your boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, cool. No, so, no, I mean, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, calling people every day under any circumstance, that's why I like. And then yet you say you're not an introvert, dog. You got I'm all not the an introvert. I socialize a lot. I was at um, this restaurant last night until like one in the morning, hanging out with some people and just chatting. You know, I, I'm not like an introvert. I, I definitely wouldn't say I'm an introvert at all. Mm. It pl- seems like it. It would seem like it, but yeah. I would definitely say I'm not. Do you plan on having kids? Yo, that's such a teenage question. No, it's such a it's such a grandma question. <laughs> <laughs> so I went from a teenage <laughs> to a grandma. <laughs> yeah, that's such a grandma question. Um, <laughs> d- yeah, kid. I mean, I could have kids. Not at the moment, though. Yeah. I couldn't have kids now. Uh, I need to be in one place to have kids, I think. But not right now. When I, when I have kids. Yeah, dude, you're living my dream, man. Like, fucking doing what you love, traveling all over the world. I'd love to do that, man. Yeah, I might go to Mumbai soon. I'm really excited about that. I want to go to Mumbai. First time there? Or you've been there? I've never been. My yeah. first time. Oh, first time. Check out. Isn't it exciting when it's like you're the going to a place? Time? Yeah. Mm. But sometimes I'm like, I go to places and then I just stay in my hotel room for like two days. Then I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Sometimes I just uh, like, sometimes I just don't want to like, sometimes I just want to, my drive from the airport to the hotel room is enough. I'm like, oh shit, I get a sense of the sea. Mm. Sometimes, that's only sometimes when I'm like, I'll come back here. Yeah. Right? And then I'll, then I'll see it properly. But which, city, which city do you fuck with? Oh, apart from London. New York is great. New York is great. I've had a good time in uh, Istanbul. Istanbul was some fire. Mm. Hong Kong was fire. A lot of t- Copenhagen was my new, like, whoa, this place is dope. Mm. Copenhagen. I might go to LA in March. So if that happens... Uh, I have never been to LA, mm. uh, so I think. So why do you still come back here, bro? You got no woman, no kids. Oh no, I've got I've got a life here, man. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> my mom is here, my brothers. This this a whole. I've got a life. I've got friends here. Yeah. Can't be neglectful to those situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're pretty much like a nomad, man. Pretty much, yeah. That's so dope. It seems dope, yeah. Isn't it liberating to be like? To, to rid yourself of like possessions and stuff and like you're not confined to one space um yeah it's fucking dope <laughs> I'm also like not like I mean if you ever came to my place or, uh, I don't have the furniture now at the moment but I have I want like a minimalist place where I'm like uh, you know just mm, one couch two chairs this this just like very minimal yeah and not cluttered you know because yeah. because possess yeah possessions are the things that kind of like because before I just before I moved to the UK I was just, when I got to the I just sold all my shit yeah 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 I was like I don't need this stuff this yeah. stuff is all holding me back yeah um, and wasn't it liberating very liberating because mm. like now um I, I recently sold my house ne? Mm. and now literally I just realized all I need is my laptop because there's internet connections everywhere. Uh, a few clothes. Yeah, that's yeah. It. The minute you discover that, you, the world's your oyster, man. Yeah, like shit. Where you're it. like, uh, yeah, I don't need all the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's why when you said, uh, if you have 200 million, I'm like, oh my God, the stress. <laughs> 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 I don't uh, know my word. 200 million, now I gotta think about this shit. Fucking hell, Luisa, thank you so much. How man. long How long have we been chatting? For an hour, bro. Okay, that's yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Are you gonna play the whole thing or are you cut it? No, 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 play the whole thing, man. As it is. That's crazy. Yeah. There's some I'm, I'm probably gonna cut play. out the the part about the analogy of football and whatever because I need to refine that analogy first. Yeah, and also you look like a fucking spaz <laughs> when you say shit like that. <laughs> but like your women are defenders. <laughs> 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 nah, nigga. <that's laughs> I saw you during the whole conversation, like, I'm busy. <laughs> no, I was just like, where are 
Uh, you know what? That's dude, how you roll in your parts. Uh, it's very seldom that, you know, you can have conversations like these with celebrities because they're so stuck up in, like, in their own world, you know? So I appreciate you coming through and spending your time with me for the past 60 minutes. Mac G. Yeah, man. There we go. Uh, so so you're going to be back on the road, ne? Soon. Yeah. S- just sort out some shit and then I'll be back on the road. Yeah. I need to go back to check emails and call people and make sure that... Uh, when are you inviting me to come and watch an Arsenal game? Oh, this guy. You think uh, it's... You don't need an invite to, for me to watch an Arsenal game. <laughs> you just need like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just need like a... What do you call it? Um, buy a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> fucking go. Like, why am I involved in this? <laughs> Lisa, thank you so much, man. Be safe, man. Love you long time. Podcast and chill. We out. Boom.